Okay. All right, we'll call to order the uh, Tuesday, June 15th Public Works Committee meeting. Do a roll call, please. Jenny Wook, City Council. Oh, hi, I'm City Council. Maureen Whitaker, staff. Trent Ward, staff. Aaron Holst, staff. Jim Franich, Council. Uh, could I get a, a approval of the wonderful, very complete minutes that uh, Maureen prepared? <laughs> Move to approve the uh, May meeting minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Minutes pass. First item on the agenda is old business, six year transportation improvement program update and project cost discussion. Looks like that's you, Aaron. Thank you, Council Member Franich. Um, so I just wanna go over first some of the items that are in your packets for tonight. One, you'll see the 2021 TIP memo. Um, you'll also see last year's 2021 approved TIP map. You'll see this year's 2022 TIP map, the proposed TIP map. And then I also created a spreadsheet that compares last year's approved TIP projects um, to this year's proposed TIP projects. So we wanted to bring this back to Public Works Committee a second time to present the following. Um, one is an updated proposed 2022 TIP map based on the recommendations from the May Public Works Committee meeting and um, wanted to clarify something. So as a matter of clarification, due to some document control issues at the last Public Works Committee meeting, some of the 2021 project numbers that were discussed in that May meeting were inaccurate. So um, for that reason, I provided this 2021 tip map. Um, so I apologize for that. I accidentally grabbed a map that, the map that went to council, but it wasn't the approved version. So some, if you remember, there were some changes recommended by council at that meeting. So a couple of the project numbers we discussed last time were just slightly inaccurate. So you'll see that this is, um, this is now corrected. We also wanted to discuss tonight how we're updating the TIP project cost. So the TIP project cost will be updated to be consistent with the FHWA National Highway Construction Cost Index or the NHCCI. Uh, this is consistent with how the TIF or transportation impact fees are being updated. And yeah, Mo, if you could, if you could share that, um, we can look at that for a minute here. So this is a plot of the NHCCI or National Highway Construction Cost Index. So um, on the far right hand side, you see this 1.86 for Q4 of 2020. That's the most current information that they've provided to us. And on the left hand side, if you look back to Q3, Q4, kind of in between Q3 and Q4 of 2018, you'll see that that value, if you look straight across the chart, is exactly the same or very, very similar to what it is today. So uh, what we are proposing is as of this year, we're going to leave this alone because there's literally no change from when this these costs were updated last. And those were updated last as part of the 2018 transportation element process that I'm sure everybody um, remembers well. <laughs> so um, yeah, our proposal is to leave this alone because there's literally no change since the last update. Obviously, as, um, as Trent and Jeff and I get engineers estimates or we refine cost information and get um, values that we update those continuously. But if, if the project was um, a, a cost that we estimated during the 2018 um, transportation element, then we're gonna leave that alone for now until, until next year. And that's something we're gonna definitely do annually because I mean, this could, 
this could skyrocket um, next year, and uh, we're kind of expecting that this cost index to change significantly. So we'll look at this every year, and you'll see this plot and an update to our TIP project costs every year. Um, however, I uh, I don't I don't have the report done yet. As soon as we get off this this as soon as I'm out of this public works committee meeting, I'm going to begin working on that report and um, I think our, you will see that prior to the June 28th council meeting. Uh, Aaron? Yes. The index that uh, runs uh, latitude there on the, the left index 2003 Q1 equals one. Starts out at uh, 1.84. Yeah, I'm looking at that. What 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 is what do those numbers represent? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I when I Jeff showed me this map recently, and I believe, you know, I can I can pull that up and get back to you. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Well, okay, I, you know, I. So this this map that's that, that's running horizontally with the the quarters underneath it, I, I'm assuming that the, the the lines that are going up and down following those quarters it, is that the cost or the is that relative to dollars or or what is what is that actually indicating? Yeah, this is just the. The construction cost index. So, if you'll see in 2018, it was 1.84. It kind of, as it moved forward from Q3 of 2018, it kind of leveled out, um, but then it, it skyrocketed in 2019 and then it dipped back down to in Q4 of 2020. Well, I, I to tell you the truth, I really have, uh, I, I'm, I'm very, very skeptical of the accuracy of this, given the overall tremendous inflationary numbers with uh, just building costs in general, especially materials. So I, I find it really hard to believe that this is an accurate map that shows apparently in between quarter three of 2020 and quarter four of uh, 2020, that these costs have gone down. Yeah, uh, I, I understand the concern. I guess, um, like I said, we're definitely expecting to see due to, to some of these costs increases due to you know production issues and lumber timber costs going up. We do fully expect to see this. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to skyrocket, but we expect to see this go back up. So this. The most recent data they've provided to us is from Q4 of 2020. So yeah, obviously the end of last year, but um, like you mentioned, I, I would expect to see this go back up. Now, if I might jump in just really quick. Incidentally though, I would like to point out that we, we staff were surprised in 21. So in the last six months, um, the bidding that we've done for capital projects, the, the costs are not coming in as high as we thought they would. Um, so for example, we bid the uh, Stinson Avenue project, we bid the 38th Avenue, uh, 38th Street project. We're currently bidding the Gig Harbor North pedestrian improvements, but the Stinson and the 38th actually came in on uh, at, at and around engineers um, estimate. And we really anticipated those were gonna be higher than they were. Now we're about to uh, advertise lift station six and 12 also, um, but our consultants that are doing engineers estimated costs for construction, they're saying, you know, we're not anticipating um, significant cost increase even for those lift stations this summer. Um, and I think what 2020 is reflecting is that so much stopped in 2020. 
because these are indexes, so they're trends. They're not um, dollars in particular. And what I believe the index um, qualifier on that left side there that says index 2003 Q1 equals one is to give us a reference. So they're saying in the year 2003, quarter one was an index of one. They just picked that, that's the baseline. So then our, you know, our costs have gone up to 2018 Q3 on this chart between quarter one of 03 to quarter three of 2018 we're looking at you know 1.8 times the cost. So pretty significant cost increase over the, that 15 plus year period. Yeah, Trent, I can confirm what you just said. I, the, the map here that we're looking at is a zoomed in version. So it doesn't show it going all the way back to 2003, but yes, it is on the, on the left-hand side there. That is a reference to the 2003 Q1 being at a value of one. So what is the practical application of this? Just to tell us that prices are going up for everything and we're, we could ex we should expect to pay more for our projects? Is that what this is about? Well, this, this you know, shows us in this uh, graph period from 2018 Q3 to 2020 Q4, it shows that pretty much when we came out of 2018, Prices skyrocketed in 2019. They had a little bit of a dip mid-year. They were right back up at the end, you know, at the beginning of 2020. And then COVID, I, I don't know. They didn't put a COVID factor in this, but prices definitely were going up from 18 to 19. What I kind of wonder is, you know, the data is going to be skewed like it is in so many things with this COVID uh, effect on our economy, so. Well, as I say, I, I have real problems with the accuracy of that map. Um, and, you know, I've done some projects of my own and I, I know what the increase of pricing is. I'm not sure if this, um, you know, I, I, I'm sure the increased prices of petroleum projects must, or what, what does the National Highway Construction Cost Index, what items are they tracking? I don't know if you have a list available, Aaron, but the highway index tracks all costs um, for, for you know, everything from oil to steel to um, aluminum. Um, gravel prices, labor costs. I mean, they're, they're looking at all of what it takes to construct um, you know, public infrastructure projects. Well, any, any news that, that I've seen or anybody that I've talked to that, that's done any kind of a projects, this, this graph is patently false. The costs are through the roof and I just, you know, I think that we need our TIF amount needs to keep pace with these costs. And if we're using faulty data to um, put together what our TIF cost is going to be, that is just going to set us further behind. Is well, my voice being heard here? Yeah. Yes. This is Bob Larson. I just want to make sure everybody understands. This is an index. It shows you a relative. This is not an exact pricing scheme. And it was just provided by staff to show you the relative difference there. You got to realize the difference. If you see those lines on there, the vertical lines, those are relative differences. They're not remarkably different from one another. It just shows on the graph as being as such. The difference between 1.84 and 1.9 is not a great deal of a margin of difference here. I want to make sure everybody understands this. These are accurate. These are accurate as, as across the national, across the country. I don't think we want to say it's specific, specific to, to Tacoma, or the Puget Sound region, or even Washington State. It, it's just more of a of a barometer, if you will, just for discussion purposes. So we're well aware of this stuff. That's all it's intended to be. 
it, it, it's, it, it's, it's inaccurate. It's just, it's just not, uh, you know, in all due respect to, to a council member French, it's just not, that's not an accurate statement. We're just trying to show you the relative difference here and making sure everybody understands and appreciates that. That's all it was intended for. Is it, we, we, uh, is the dates, are the dates on the bottom? I assume there's some actual lag in the data. That is, this is a trailing indicator. <laughs> Come yeah. on. You, you, you don't well, know it until it's across over. the bottom. There, there, there are dates across the bottom. I don't think we need to belabor that, that whole issue. There's their dates that are clearly showing what, what the costs were relative to the projects. Right. And they, they compile this data, data across, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of projects. Yeah. And they're trying to show that that's, that's all it was intended to show. Yeah. Sort of like the consumer price index only for highways. Thank you. Yeah, that's a better way of putting it. You, you, you took it in three words and, and described what I tried to tell you in about, you know, three minutes. So, yes. Well, and, and let's, you know, we'd all agree. We all have seen massive price increases on, say, building materials. But that's only occurred this spring, this early this spring. Very, very recent. So, and that's not reflected on this index um, graph because it ended, you know, in December, effectively December of last year. Yeah. So really, we saw the big building material upswing in pricing just over the last three, four months. Exactly. Yeah, and I, if Nobody I could chime in here, I, I looked up the, what is the National Highway Construction Cost Index? Because it sounds like Council Member Franich was asking where this data comes from. So I could just read their definition off the website that produced this index. So. It's a measure of the average change over time in the prices paid by state transportation departments for roadway construction materials and services. So that's where that's where it comes from. Well, I, I think we need to uh, look into the possibility. You know, it's it's uh, the United States is a big country, and I think we need to if we're going to be responsible to our citizens, we need to maybe change to a formula that is tracking more of what things cost in Washington state. Uh, if this is a 50 state average, um, that, that really doesn't reflect what's going on in our state. So. I, I don't think we need to belabor the issue any longer. It was just, it was more of an index to show you what's going on. We could argue this all day, but it's not going to change the fact that we're going to have to put out for bid every one of these projects, or and we may have to take a look at what the you know what the regional pricing index is. Yeah, for concrete, for asphalt, whatever it might be, and that's going to be fluctuating dependent upon the time of the year, and the types of projects, and the materials you're using, and the volumes, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and I, and I can assure you, Council Member Franich, um, the. The state of Washington DOT, um, they they uh, track similar costs for just the state of Washington, and many many times we utilize their records to um, to estimate uh, unit pricing for our local projects because they look at the east side of the state and the west side of the state. We all know things are a little bit different, so we validate costs on a more local basis quite often when we. Cost estimating for capital projects. Well, I get my point is, uh, Mr. Larson, is that we're we're using these numbers to calculate our transportation impact fees, and those need to be representative of what the actual costs are. So, so we, that's that's one element we're using. Yes, it's not the only element we're using. Okay, I I think we. Uh, I think staff's finished that piece if the committee wants to move on. Yeah, actually, that, that was the end of everything that I had prepared. I don't know if we want to pull up the map and look at it or if all the council members here have had a chance to look at it yet. But yeah, we're, we're here to answer questions. That was everything that I had prepared. Yeah, I've, I've looked at it actually in quite a bit of detail. And it's, um, it's, it's I think it's a pretty darn good shape. It's called... Um, you, you guys have really uh, upped your game in the, over the last couple of years in terms of uh, how this is uh, prepared and uh, particularly uh, prioritized, et cetera. I'm particularly happy with the movement of the uh, 
so-called phase two, I believe it is, of the 38th Avenue thing that we, we've heard about so many times in the last year or so. Um, this is the stretch between 56th and Hunt. Yep. Um, the one with the, with the Grand Canyon ditches and the, the uh, very small shoulders and a lot of traffic. Um, so that's moved up quite a bit. Um, so my assumption is those top three projects are essentially going to be done in early 2022. So in terms of bringing new items into the fold, uh, probably would start around four on the priority list and move down from there. So um, anyway, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I, I had a few questions. Um, one of them, and, and by the way, I don't have the data yet, um, but that is Vern Hartson. Bert, Bert Hartson is the, in my mind, is the, the um, last loop, last part of the, the bypass loop consisting of Stinson, Harborview, North Harborview, and then on to Crescent. Uh, or onto Vern Hartson over to Crescent Valley. And there's two aspects to it. One is I think that will become the next choke point in people trying to get to the east side of unincorporated Pierce County. Uh, it looks that way. And uh, I don't think we want them going all the way up to Vern Hartson and coming back down uh, to take a mile away. So I think there's a traffic element. The other thing we've heard, I think, multiple times over the last... Eh, probably half a year, is speed on the hill coming down Vern Hartson. We keep hearing that story. It's been recurring for several months now. Um, so it's something we, I think we had to look at it and we may want to consider moving that one up priority wise called, we may have to do something there, okay? Um, the other thing that came to mind, is, and, and I'm not advocating it yet, but we haven't done a traffic study. We're coming up on the four year mark, if I remember correctly. It was done and actual data was assembled in 2017, if I recall, it was labeled a 2018 report. And it's 221 now, so we're four years on the old one. Um, so that's another thing we ought to be considering. But by the way, we, due to the fact that we, we had a uh, about a year and a half carved out of the <laughs> the growth curve as far as traffic uh, with the pandemic. We're probably right about where we were when we left off uh, back in uh, 2019, I would guess, right now. So um, I, that's purely a guess. But um, it's another thing we got to start thinking about is when the next traffic study should be done and what should we be studying? For example, um, I think we should be confirming the things that we have done are doing what they're supposed to do, okay? And that would be primarily Stinson, uh, Stinson Rosedale uh, intersection, Stinson Harborview intersection, uh, some of these other ones were where we've actually uh, implemented um, some of these actions. Uh, since then. So anyway, that's my comments. Uh, other than Bert Hartson's the only one, and, and by the way, I don't have anything specific on it, but it's something we really ought to keep our eye on, okay? Um, it's, um, it, it could rise quickly, if, if my guess is correct, both from a traffic standpoint and also from a, uh, uh, a speeding standpoint. Yeah, thanks, Councilmember Himes. I, I didn't hear any specific questions there, but we appreciate your feedback. Uh, do you have anything further, Councilmember Wook, on this issue? Um, I, I don't really, but I, I would like to know what is the Hunt Street, Hunt Street 38th Avenue intersection improvements, and and why? Wh how does that differ from? Um, the other things on 38th Street that we're looking at. Yeah, 
Yeah, if we could pull up the map there, no, that'd be great. <clears throat> yeah, the Hunt Street 38th Avenue intersection improvements. Um, we we eventually want to, you know, look at doing either a signal or a roundabout or adding some efficiencies and capacity to that intersection. So um, that one's um, still a ways out. We have we have not done any preliminary engineering or design on that um, currently, other than we've modeled it through the transportation element process. That does... Why would that not be in the same? area as uh, the whole has a whole 38th street there why are they so why are they numbered so differently um, so for example um the 38th avenue phase two right 38th yeah. street this year it's it's six but the 38th street intersection improvement is 15. wouldn't wouldn't they they're in the same area wouldn't that happen at the same time it could. I, th I think they're split out like that mostly because um, when we're applying for grants um, with, with TIB or federal grants, the project number 15, the Hunt 38 intersection improvement project is a very specific uh, intersection project with capacity and efficiency improvements associated with it. When we're talking about the other 38th Avenue projects, although there may be some capacity improvements i think most of those and maybe trent's been a little bit more involved with these but most of those are, are pedestrian related um adding sidewalks to the corridor and, and things like that so i think that's why they're split up as they are because we'd have a better op opportunity for example through tib of, of getting a grant for um just the it'd be a different grant for the Hunt 38th intersection than we would be applying for for the roadway segment, such as project number six um, there. OK, thank yeah. you. So, so it's an administrative thing versus a, a reality thing, I, I think is what you're saying. We probably would combine them when we did it. <laughs> OK. They could be combined. It would be more beneficial to apply for grants uh, separately. Understood. Got it. The challenge is always with a lot of the grants that we have had the benefit of uh, obtaining over the years. They're competitive grants, so there's points for different purposes and reasons. Um, if you go after a bunch of pedestrian improvements, um, you can score a lot of points, but if you threw an intersection into the mix of it, it may um, affect your uh, competition with others that are going after uh, pedestrian improvements. Got it. Thank it's you so much. They, yeah, it's the way they've split up the grant dollars, primarily on the TIB or the state side. The feds, not so much. Huh. OK, thank you. OK, looks, All right. looks good. That, but by the way, the the uh, I guess the other thing, and this is a comment, I'd really like to to when we discuss this with council for approval, um, I'd really like this to be the starting point of the 2022 budget discussion and really get a handle on that fast. Uh, seems like every year we have a bunch of flyers that come out of nowhere <laughs> in October and November. <laughs> when we start talking budget uh, in the, in the uh, transportation area. Prentice Street, I can, I can rattle off a series of them called it just came out of nowhere at the 11th hour. And uh, we wasted quite a bit of time debating some of those things. So to me, it would be very helpful, I think, from a, an efficiency standpoint, that once we've got our priorities set uh, on the tip, uh, that they not only feed the TIF, but they also feed the budget discussion called, hey, we had the discussion on functionality as, to, as far as what we want, what our priorities are. So that ought to be a, 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 a major driver, to be quite honest, of the budget discussion for transportation stuff. All right, well, we have uh, no new business schedule, so I guess we'll move into the CIP review. Okay. 
Um, hopefully you've all had an opportunity to, to look at these um, CIT schedules. Uh, tiers one and two are the, are the active ones. Tiers three and four, not so much. However, um, there has been a couple of highlighted changes in tier four, but um, so we can start it on tier one. And these are, these are just reflective of uh, the current status of each of these projects. Um, been some minor movement. This is pretty well trending like you've seen over the last, at least over the last month. Yeah. At Edinburgh Brick House Rehab. Um, that project's progressing uh, slowly at the moment because of the chimney uh, replacement element. Um, Anyway, we're resolving that. Uh, there's been involvement, of course, with the um, the design review board and the historic um, society uh, relationship to the Eden Boat Brick House. So that's being resolved. We're just waiting for the final design on the the physical construction of the chimney back to the way it was, and then that work will proceed and that project will wrap up. Um, the uh, railway carriages is Ed and Boat uh, fabrications in process as we speak. Um, delivery of materials to the boat shop should be beginning in July. And uh, they have a, a hydraulic permit through uh, Fish and Wildlife for when they're allowed to actually work over the water. That starts about mid July, and then they can work into, I believe, next May, uh, March. Um, so that's what's uh, reflected here on the installation. Community Paddler's Dock. Um, I can't speak to that in any level of detail beyond the dates you see there. Jeff's been uh, primarily involved in that one. So if you do have questions, feel free to uh, shoot them, run, them, run them by Jeff. No changes on Shoreline Master uh, Program Amendment and Public Art, Austin Estuary Honoring Symbol. Um, there has been some changes in dates there. And again, Jeff's been primarily bird dog in that. So, um, we can move forward. Okay, so then we're on to I, number 23 there, Masonic Lodge Visioning. Um, and the Ansage Human Powered Waterfront Storage, Ansage Park Advanced Mitigation, uh, Parks, Recreation, Open Space. Those are all, again, uh, Jeff's leading the charge on those. I believe uh, if you have any questions about them, please contact him. Scansi net shed painting, I can speak to. Um, we're, we're currently um, putting together a bid package to um, get out on the street and advertise on July 1st uh, to have the net shed painted this year. Um, some, of the, some of the challenges are to um, get it painted before the, the seasons and the weather changes um, uh, this fall and to coordinate in all of the other activities that are occurring downtown. So that one's gonna be a challenge, but we're, we're going to advertise it 1st of July and hopefully have it awarded um, by the end of July and construction start right after the gig fest is our uh, tentative schedule. And we feel that should give about three to four weeks time to get that building um, cleaned up and a fresh coat of paint put on it. Uh, if there's any miscellaneous um, siding repairs to be done, we're gonna keep them minimal. And uh, that will be a part of the paint contract. Any roof repairs are not going to be a part of this contract that will be dealt with uh, for our operations folks.
city building, HVAC. I'm, um, I'm not involved in the HVAC stuff. I think it's uh, just following its uh, intended schedule. Next one is pedestrian crosswalk improvements, Gig Harbor North. That is currently bidding. We open bids on June 24th, so a week from this Thursday. Um, I'm going to, just to give you guys a, a quick heads up, I'm going to be sending out a kind of a special request um, to the council um, for this project to award it in a non-customary fashion. Um, and what I mean is we're opening bids on the 24th. We would like to bring the contract to council, assuming it's all appropriate and all the T's crossed and I's dotted and um, criteria met by the bidder. Um, bring it to council on the 28th for award. Um, what that means is we aren't going to be able to get the information in front of council until uh, probably end of business on Friday the 25th for the immediate council meeting following on Monday the 28th. Um, otherwise, we will be delayed until July 12th wow. uh, to award the contract. We lose approximately three weeks. Ooh. Ooh. And, and I know how important this project is to council and the community. And we'd like to, if possible, uh, move it forward in this maybe less than desirable manner, but um, we're gonna we're gonna plead our case to you all and see if it's something we can make happen. You Thank won't you. have to plead very much. <laughs> in fact, well, I, I think Jenny's approved it already. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Well, you know, and me too, by the way. <laughs> we wouldn't normally even ask this, to be honest, uh, and it's just an ask. Um, yeah. I'll be sending this out and explaining the what and why on this, giving you guys the time frames in the contract. Of course, you know, everybody wants to get these RRFB assemblies installed as soon as possible this summer and for sure for the next school year. So anyway, that's a little, uh, a, a little extra on that one. That's good. Yeah, anything Thank you can do you. to pull that off, that's great. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, thank, thanks, that's good to hear. Um, the uh, Operations Center, no change. Stinson Avenue pavement overlay project on Rosedale intersection, no change. The Harbor View intersection um, is on schedule to advertise this Thursday, the 10th. So that's gonna hit the streets. We're gonna do a three week advertisement period um, with the intent of bringing a bid award to council on the 26th of July. And then construction is, there is a little error on here under line 60 construction. We originally scoped it to begin August 16th, but in order to not create any havoc for the gig fest, uh, the gig festival, we're going to push it one week and start after the festival on the 23rd. Is, is there any way on this that you could indicate the rough spans of when that intersection is actually gonna be closed before everybody reads this over a half year <laughs> <laughs> of being closed and has a heart attack? It would be worthwhile, I think, to somehow indicate on here uh, yeah, this is the construction period, but the stretches when the actual intersection will be down, closed for traffic, um, are only a, hopefully a small portion of the span. Yeah, um, I don't think we can define that right now. And the reason I say that is we staff could define a time frame, but what we would prefer is get a contractor lined up and then sit down with them and define the actual closure times. Okay, e even if it's just a, a footnote that says of that span, oh, that I estimated some total amount will result in the actual intersection being closed. Sure, I mean, we could, we could try to do that. Yeah, that, that would be worthwhile. 
Yeah. Yeah, we'll look at doing that or at least providing some indication, hey, there will be closures and it, but it will only be thus and so. Yeah, because I think the 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 tack you took on the uh, on the upper one, the Rosedale Stinson thing worked pretty neat. Uh, you, you went on a full court press and had the actual intersection down a relatively short period of time for what was going on. Yeah. I think that worked very well. What What is going on, Trent, with the uh, repair of the sewer main? It's, uh, well, the sewer main uh, replacement slash repair is the first order of business in this contract. So literally on August 23rd, whoever the contractor is, they're, they're being instructed in the contract documents that's what you got to do first. So we're defining utility work has to occur first. What we anticipate is this contract's going to be primarily utility work this year, come November-ish timeframe when the weather turns bad and, and wet, we're likely going to suspend the contract through the wettest, coldest part of the winter. What we don't want is to have a contractor out there trying to, you know, do grading, fill, earthwork in the middle of the winter in that intersection and make a bigger disaster out of it than it needs to be. So we're considering we will suspend and then have them start up March 1st of 22 and finish by hopefully June of 22. Yeah. We think that's the most appropriate way to do this. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's it's going to be two separate painful periods, but we don't want to mess all winter long. Not yeah, next absolutely. to the shoreline. Thank you. Um, 38th Avenue Phase 1 project, you know, has uh, been awarded. Masonic Contractors is our... Uh, construction company, and they will be starting work out there on 38th on the 28th of June. So we're, we're having them hold off till school's out, which 23rd is the last day of school, and then getting them in there and pushing them to be done as they can before school starts again. So is there a chance that they will get done before school starts again? There is a chance. Um, we're we're, we're going to push them hard because... Uh, the work they need to do, um, they should be able to get a lion's share of it done during the summer months before school starts in September. Yeah, that would be a mess if they're still working on that street when folks are coming and going so much. Yeah. Thank you. Where are you at with the county um, when we're going to get this our portion done and then it's going to be a sidewalk to nowhere? Yeah, we've been in uh, conversations with the county. They, uh, of course, we can't tell them what to do. Um, they have our plans. They know we're building it right now. Um, I think their six-year TIP shows planning level effort on their, you know, portion of it south of us um, I, for next year. And I don't know if they've allocated construction money or not. Well, I ran into Council Member Young. I don't know if I mentioned it at the last meeting, and he he was actually was caught off guard that we were moving ahead with this, and he had mentioned that um, he thought that there was some money that the county had. Um, I wasn't really set aside, but he thought that there was there was some money somewhere that. Um, he was going to try and uh, I mean, are, are you in contact with um, Council Member Young on this project? No, not Council Member Young. I mean, I haven't been, but um, me and uh, the engineering staff have been in contact with Brian Stacy's office and with uh, their capital projects uh, engineer. Oh, and our, her name slipped in my mind. We've been coordinating with them for the last three years on this. 
Well, it uh, would have been nice to have a complete sidewalk. Yeah. We agree. I mean, you know, complete. So we're going to build to Briarwood. And of course, we know we, we have our phase 1B and 1C. So we still have a big gap to get up to uh, 56. And then, of course, phase 2 is a big gap. So... Well, absolutely, but from, from Briarwood to not complete it to the school is uh, ridiculous. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's so, why we've been, we've been in touch with them and sending them our plans so they can design and do their thing. But. All right, thank you. Um, let's see. So Burnham Half Street Improvements is um, in design. That's accurate. ADA self-evaluation transition plan, no change on there. Um, a Trent? Yes. Uh, on that Burnham Drive, um, do we have a cost estimate on that yet? An engineer's we estimate? Don't, we don't beyond the estimates that were used to establish the budgets uh, or the costs within our current budget. Right, but the, the, the plan that ultimately got approved was none of the plans that we were looking at before. Yeah, the, the multi-use path, the 10-foot path option. Yes. Yeah. Well, that is what we use, though, for the... Um, well, no. The budget was based on our, our city standard roadway cross-section. You're correct. We have not updated those uh, costs that you see in the budget based on the 10 foot wide multi-use path. When will, when will we have those numbers? Um, we'll have them at 30% design, but that's gonna be probably August timeframe. All right, thank you. And, wh and what we're pushing the consultant on is to at least have as good a cost as they can before we do our budget uh, budgeting for 22. So we're pushing them for August. We'll hopefully have some good numbers to share with council and planning the construction phase of it in 22. Thank you. Um, no change on the timelines for the water uh, intertie project or the comp plan update, water comp plan update. Well, number three, um, the well development is all done. So the, uh, the casings in the ground, the pipe between the, the uh, tank and the new casing is installed. Um, what's left to do is to lower a new pump and drop pipe in the casing, get purities and uh, turn the system on. And that's actually a separate contract from what you see here. Um, it's a separate company coming in. The pump techs coming in to set the pump. We have the pump in our hands. We have all the pipe in our hands. We just are getting, trying to get pump tech here to do the install. So we're still shooting for the 30th. Wastewater projects, uh, I mentioned lift station six and 12 are about ready to advertise for bids. Um, so those dates are as accurate as we know today. Murphy's Landing, Marina Navigation Channel Dredge. Um, I'm uh, working with parametrics on a scope and fee to get that design contract uh, moving forward, as you know, the agreement with the uh, Murphy's Landing is has been um, has been uh, completed between council and the and the uh, yacht club. So, well, it should take some long time for this project to to get completed. It seems like yes, it has taken a long time. I will agree. Uh, 
Burnham uh, Drive 96 Culver Repair is a part of the um, Burnham Half Street improvements. So those dates are same as the road project above. Storm utility revenue study, Jeff is um, bird dog in that one. And uh, he, he mentioned uh, earlier today that that's on track. That's tier one. Let's see. Sorry guys, I can only load up so many on this at a time. So it just takes just a second. I've got my, my quiver is full. Okay, this is tier two. Tier two. Native vegetation plantings. We've um, we've got that slated for this fall in the planting season, um, and then wastewater projects. Um, no change on the generator replacement timeline. The digester upgrades. I believe Daryl has modified those dates. That's why they're highlighted in yellow. And then Jeff mentioned this morning utility rate studies are. Um, are on track. Uh, Have we heard anything more from the state about upgrading some wastewater treatment issues um, because of the protein, I guess, in the water? I'm not aware, but I'm, I, I wouldn't necessarily know that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, follow up with, with uh, Jeff or Daryl on that item. Be ready for tier three. Yeah, tier three. I don't think had any changes. We can certainly pull it up, if, but there were no date uh, changes on it at all. And tier four. Oh, not four. Hold it. Yeah, tier four is a little bit of repeat because we pulled the scanty net shed forward to tier one. So we'll eliminate it off of tier four um, after this. We've already talked about scanty net shed. The uh, commercial fishing home port, um, Jeff's changed those dates. I'm not involved in that, so I can't speak to it. Fishman Trail connection to Harborview Drive, that's been pushed out. Um, basically to the end of the year. And I think we had talked about that last time. Annual payment maintenance, you know, we showed this to you last time too, that's being suspended or deferred to next year. Uh, various crosswalk and sidewalk installations. That was a design contract. We pushed it out towards the end of the year as well. and no other changes have been made. I, I don't have it in front of me, but the 38th Avenue between 56th and Hunt, what does the span on that look like again? I assume it's in a preliminary design action if there is any action, hopefully there's action in 2022. That's the phase two portion? Phase two, yep. No, we don't have any, we have done nothing uh, currently on that. Okay. Um, it's certainly like you were mentioning earlier, it's, uh, you know, with the six year TIP, it's something that if council wants to prioritize, um, we currently don't have it on our uh, work plan. I guess I, for one, would like to get that moved up a little bit, particularly looking at your spans, a lot of your design stuff seems to be ending in the first or second quarter or by the first and second quarter of 2022. Yeah. And it looks to me like we could at least get a start in the third or fourth quarter 
of 2022 on that particular project. Uh, and, could I get a clarification of which project I was? Uh... It's the it's the the 38th Avenue uh, project between 56th and Hunt Street. Oh, is that it's the phase two we were calling it. Phase two, yeah, phase two, they call it. Is that showing on the screen right now? I got a different screenshot of something here. If we oh. pull up the tip map, um, it identifies it pretty clearly. I, yeah, it's up in the number six spot, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yep. Number six. Okay. Yeah, I, I would certainly want to defer to staff about the, uh, the capacity to move something up and how that might affect other projects. That's the only condition I would want to put on this. What was uh, it? I, I think that it will be, could be a discussion, discussion at the budget time to decide what we're going to move forward for with in 2022, Bob. I certainly yeah, appreciate I that. Yeah, because it's got to be a, a broader, fuller discussion with the full council. Yes. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. But again, tying the tying the, the tip to the budget discussion. By the time mm -hmm. we get there, the, the first three are going to be pretty well along, if not pretty well gone, I would hope. Uh, first three items on the on the tip list, which means that number six is going to become more like a number three in the first or second quarter of, of next year. OK, so that's what I'm thinking. So we'll, we'll yeah we'll have the discussion, yeah. but but it shouldn't be like it's coming out of nowhere. No, we know what it is. We know it's high priority. Uh, we know we'd like to get going on it, and uh, therefore we should have that discussion and we should have it in the budget. Yeah. So part of this is a this is part of the money that we've asked um, the federal dollars to go for. Do we know when we're going to hear from that? Is there a date that somebody will let us know if we got any money or not? Well, Bob might, uh, Bob Larson might know more about that than me, but I think it's hinging on whatever the other Washington's doing with their infrastructure bill. Right. We, yeah, we, we are not familiar at all. I, in fact, I just uh, emailed Dale Learn from Gordon Thomas Honeywell yesterday asking him to keep us surprised of what the developments might be with the uh, Senators Cantwell and Murray, as well as uh, uh, Representative uh, Kilmer, on on their the programs that they've got. Uh, we have not heard anything more to date, but as soon as we do, we're going to keep Council uh, well apprised of that. I, I can assure you of that. Thank you. Okay, uh, let her out. Wrap it up, Trent, for you. Yeah, unless there's any other questions you have on these um, capital project schedules, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do not know if we have anybody in the public. Uh, Maureen? Yes, we have one um, public comment that was e emailed to me today that I would like to read. Very good. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to set my little timer. And Okay, this public comment is from Thomas P. Wick, address Hunt Street Northwest, Dick Harbor, Washington, 98335. And regarding the courtyards at Scansy Park, based on published court case records, the conditional use permit for this development expired in 2008. Therefore, when it expired, this project was deemed null and void. Regarding the courtyards at Scansy Park, given the expiration of the conditional use permit, rendered this project null and void, and given the city allowed this project to start and to continue absent a conditional use permit and absent a downhill drainage conveyance to manage the increased stormwater runoff that will emanate from within it, the entire site must be returned to its pre-developed, undisturbed forested state to the extent possible, meaning all homes, all streets, and all infrastructure must be removed 
All removed soils must be re-imported and the entire site must be reforested. The new application for the construction of a clubhouse cannot be given consideration, given the courtyards at Scansy Park Development started and was allowed to continue absent a valid permit. The courtyards at Scansy, Scansy Park's final plat has already been approved. Therefore, no deviations from the final plat can be considered, assuming final means final. Within Gig Harbor's permit portal, I observed documents identified as courtyards at Scansy Park recorded final plat. However, these documents were obscured, blacked out, precluding public access view. The documents the city labeled recorded final plat documents for the courtyards at Scansy Park cannot be found within the Pierce County Auditor's database, yet they are identified as recorded final plat documents within Gig Harbor's permit per portal. Gig Harbor rendered these recorded final plat documents inaccessible, in parentheses blacked out, in an effort to leave them subject to revision despite final plat approval. Had Gig Harbor recorded the courtyards at Scansy Park development documents and had those recorded documents showed 174 single family residents, they could not then later, if necessary, issue permits for the reconstruction of a clubhouse. Rendering the recorded final plat documents inaccessible from public access view within Gig Harbor's permit portal confirms the city knew in advance that if it was discovered the conditional use permit that allowed almost 12 homes per acre had expired, they could not allow 174 homes to be built. The applicant for a clubhouse in lieu of a single family residence is consistent with this belief. And that preclude or concludes the public comment. All right. I um, see we have one attendee. Um, I am not sure there is no name there. There's just a phone number. I don't know if that person um, has any public comment. I do not see a hand being raised. Um, please feel free to hit star nine to raise your hand if you would like to speak. Okay, I don't see any hand going up, so that will will close the public comment. And uh, announcement of other meetings. The next meeting is scheduled for July thirteenth of two thousand twenty-one. And if there's nothing nothing further, uh, get a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Hey, Trent, could you stay on a second? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.